You're working on a research paper and you need to include sources in your references section, also known as works cited or your bibliography. Whether you're working on a simple undergrad research paper, a master's thesis, or a PhD dissertation, it's very important that the sources you cite are considered robust, solid, and credible. The last thing you want to do is ground your own work in a bunch of sloppy research and hokey claims. I'm Dr. Lon Schiffbauer, and this is how to evaluate research articles for credibility. When pulling together a literature review, there are a variety of factors you can look at to establish the credibility of a research article. Here are some things to look at. The credibility of the publication. The credibility of the authors. The purpose of the study. The scope of the literature review. The selection of the methodology. The design of the study. The presentation of the findings. The stated biases and the consideration of ethical guidelines. We're going to look at all of these in detail, but there's a lot to consider, so I've included a checklist in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First, let's look at the credibility of the publication. Now, an article published in a peer-reviewed journal is going to be considered infinitely more credible than, say, something published in a nameless blog by someone you've never heard of. Hey, Lon? Lon? What? So when you say nameless blog that no one's ever heard of, do you mean like nutshell brainery? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I suppose so. Okay. Just wanted to be clear. Oh, man. Now, one website you can use to determine the credibility of a journal is called the Scamago Country and Rank Report. I know, a ridiculous name. I've included a link in the description below. This is a website that lists all the world's journals and kind of ranks them in terms of credibility. It's a pretty good site to become familiar with. Now that said, this site really focuses on academic journals, but not all your research will be focused in academia. But you still want to consider the source. For example, I publish a lot in business, so I go to sites like the Harvard Business Review or perhaps the Wall Street Journal. These are sources that I can trust. But how do I know I can trust them? Well, reputation, of course, but there's another tool that I use called allsides.com. There's a link to it in the description below. What this website does is it looks at a wide breadth of news and media outlets and evaluates them based on whether or not they're conservative, centrist, or liberal. That way I can kind of figure out the bias of the article or the journal or the news source before I cite it. The next thing you want to consider is credibility of the authors. Are they practitioners in the field or maybe academics publishing in their domain? They could be young grad students just kind of cutting their teeth, or maybe even consultants working for somebody. What are the researchers' credentials? For example, I have a PhD in industrial organizational psychology and am a certified human resources professional, so I'm qualified to speak about HR, leadership, and organizational management. But now, if I were to try to speak with any definitive authority on, say, political science, I wouldn't be considered a credible source, my degrees and certification notwithstanding. You'll also want to look at their publishing history. How often have they been published by peer-reviewed journals? And more importantly, how often have they been cited by other researchers in their own work? You'll also want to look at who's paying for the research. Is it a university or some organization or maybe a corporation? You better look out for things like that. Next, you'll want to look at the purpose of the study. Is the purpose clearly stated in context of the current body of knowledge? Does it include a specific set of research questions and hypotheses? Do the researchers clearly state how their work differs from, adds to, or validates other people's work? If it's not clear to you what's driving the research, then it may not be clear to the researchers 
which means they're going to be kind of grasping at straws. Or worse still, it might be clear to the researchers, but they want to obfuscate their intentions. Next, consider the scope of the literature review. Does the literature review include citations to pertinent articles relevant to the study? For example, it needs to include seminal works, those works upon which the field of knowledge has really been grounded, but it also needs to include current research, current references, things that have been done recently and have helped push the field of knowledge forward. The next thing you want to look at is the selection of the methodology. Is the selected methodology appropriate given the research question? Is the study population well-defined? How were the participants recruited and selected? Was the sample size appropriate for the methodology? Remember, the researchers are drawing conclusions from this sample population. So if the sample population is not well-defined, if they were not recruited or evaluated or selected properly, then their research findings are not going to be built on solid bedrock. Next, consider the design of the study. Was the design of the study appropriate, given the research question? Are the variables and controls well-defined? How are the outcomes measured and codified? Was the design described in sufficient detail as to allow other researchers to attempt to replicate the study? Like the methodology, a lot hinges on the study design. So if you find anything that raises questions in your head, then anything that's cited as a result should be considered suspect. Next, look at the presentation of the findings. You'll want to make sure the findings are presented in such a way as to facilitate understanding with data and supporting examples. This can include using graphs, charts, tables, and other tools to help make the findings clear and transparent. It also means that the discussion section provides a clear narrative of the findings, no sleight of hand to try to befuddle the reader. Ultimately, you want to ask yourself, does the discussion clearly reflect and align with the findings described in the data? This brings us to the stated biases in the study. Do the researchers call out specific biases and limitations to the study? Did they put in place steps to help mitigate the effects of these biases? Remember, everybody has biases, including the very best researchers. So the goal is not to eradicate all biases, but to mitigate for them to the extent possible. Finally, there's the consideration of ethical guidelines. In all cases, you want to make sure that the researchers have called out the specific ethical guidelines that they followed in conducting this study, and that those ethical guidelines are the right ones. And so there you go. By considering all of these factors and looking at them critically, you're going to make sure that your work is grounded in really good, solid research. So go out there and do it. We'll talk to you later.